Well, good morning. It is so good to see you guys. Well, really, I can't see you, but it's good to be with you. Um, we This morning, I just wanted to kind of take a few minutes for us to consider what happened the day that Jesus was crucified. And uh, as we're going to do that, we're really going to be um, reflecting the gospel writers tell us you see throughout the day they give us time markers morning um, at, in the third hour in the sixth hour in the ninth hour and so throughout the day we're going to be considering what Jesus did on the cross what he went through for us on this last day and so this morning we're going to look at what I'm calling the unjust trial and we think that this happened between about 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. but before we really dive into this let me just give us a small bit of background. You see, last night with the Butmans, we looked at um, the Passover, and, and they did a great job just overviewing what Jesus went through at the Last Supper. And uh, in fact, if you look in the notes, you'll find lots of scripture references for all of the things that Jesus encountered both Thursday night and on Friday. But after spending a great deal of time with his disciples over a meal, um, Jesus and his disciples made their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, where, where he spent some time in agony praying because he knew what was coming. He knew, uh, I think God had given him insight. He, he knew what was going to be happening. We also see that in, um, at the Garden of Gethsemane is where Jesus was betrayed by Judas. And um, this band of soldiers came and arrested him along with several of the religious leaders. And they carried him off in chains, taking him to the house of the high priest and, and sort of putting him through a, a mock trial, in, inquiring of him exactly, what, wh who are you? What are you doing? They brought forth false witnesses and then they kept him imprisoned overnight. In the morning, the, the gospel accounts tell us that in the morning, Jesus was brought before the Jewish council. Here it is about 6 a.m. on the East Coast. Sun would have just been rising, I think, in Israel. Uh, but So here he is before the Jewish council, and he's, he's being questioned. And they get to a verdict, and they say, well, we must, we must have this man put to death. But they don't have any means of doing that. So they go and take Jesus to Pilate. Now, I know that there are governing officials in our day who like to get up early, who like to do things. I know there are governing officials who stay up very late, which means that they probably would not be up early. But I think it's important for us to recognize just how early this was. The Bible says that it was at the break of day that he was brought before Pilate. And then uh, Luke records the fact that Pilate, after questioning him, he kind of didn't get any real good answer. He didn't get it to any uh, conclusion. He just said, he's innocent. So he sent him over to Herod. And, and he had Herod question him. Herod mocked him. Herod wanted to put on a show for him. But essentially, nothing happened. Herod said, nah, he's, he's boring me. And so he sent him back to Pilate. And Pilate inquired of, of Jesus a bit more. And Jesus responded. And, and again, I want to encourage you to take some time to reflect on, on the things that, that actually happen, on the things that are recorded in there. But in the end, Pilate declares Jesus innocent. And then he succumbs to the pressure of the crowd and sentences Jesus to death. He was mocked and he was beaten. We call this Good Friday. We call this Good Friday because it's good for us, but oh, what a horrible morning this was for our Savior. You see, if we were to take time to read over and reflect the passages and the events, you would see just how much injustice occurred. You see, there was a rush to judgment. There was coercion as the crowd tried to get Pilate to do their bidding. There was a lack of clear evidence. And, and so many things cry foul as we look back over this information. You see, in our society today, we talk about fairness and equity and a lack of bias. And we long for, quiet, for trials to be quick and thorough. But what we have to recognize is that Jesus' trial was, in, it was certainly quick, but it wasn't thorough. Even the people who are bearing false witness couldn't get their stories straight 
but that didn't seem to matter. You see, in God's sovereign plan, one of the things that we have to recognize is that the justice of God, the justice that God poured out on Jesus on our behalf was delivered by an unjust trial. And so I want to just encourage you today, April 10th, Good Friday, over the next couple of hours, let me encourage you just to contemplate, maybe read back over some of these passages that are in the notes and here in the Facebook uh, feed, and notice how much happens in such a short period of time, and think about that in our day. Notice really how quickly the next three hours passes. Notice all the things that Jesus encountered. And then finally, notice how Jesus responds. You see, he doesn't respond the same way that we might. He doesn't cry about his, his rights. He simply speaks and, and answers. Several hundred years before Jesus walked on the earth, the prophet Isaiah, I think, had some insight into this day when he says he was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. That is our Savior. These early morning hours, these first three hours in the break of day, Jesus encountered an unjust trial on our behalf. Let's contemplate that this morning. Let's pray together. God, we do thank you. Lord, we, we are so thankful for what you did for us. Jesus, thank you for what you endured on our behalf, even the injustice, the injustice of this trial on our behalf so that you could bear our guilt and shame. God, may we never look at that lightly. Thank you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, I'll be back here in about three hours and I look forward to contemplating the next part of what Jesus went through that day with you. You guys have a, a blessed morning.